Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm flying over my industrial district right now and I'm here because I think it's time to finally add another farm to the build. And this one I want to put right in this gap right here that I made with the water streams because I think that it will fit perfectly right there. And the farm that I want to put in here is a massive bee farm so that I can get hundreds of thousands of honeycomb. And that works out really well for this area right here because I can do like strips of bee sections and to make this farm I need a whole bunch of bees so I guess it's time I get searching. I know that there's one right over here but one beehive isn't really going to cover what I need so I got to go find a whole bunch more and I'm going to go get as many as I can right now to start a huge bee population. That was a pretty successful excursion getting bees. I got 10 bee nests. I don't know how many of these actually have bees. I'm hoping they all do, but we'll see. And I got these rose bushes, which if you don't know, rose bushes have a really nice feature where if you place them on a grass block, you can bone meal the top half of them and it will just give you infinite rose bushes. So I'll be using those to breed up all of my bees. And now I just need a small enclosure. And I plan on putting that up here and then I'll cover it with my actual base. Just like on the nether side, I have all this empty space. So I'm, instead of having empty space, I'm just going to have a bee farm under there. For the design of the bee farm, I'm just going to do a simple, like probably a wooden box or something, because it's going to get covered at some point. And I have a whole bunch of oak wood. I might add in some designs with maybe some bamboo or something, but I'm not 100% sure yet. This is what I'm thinking so far for the build. I think it's looking pretty nice, just a simple wooden box. And it's only four tall, so I'll definitely be able to get land over top of that. And I might have to do some interesting things if I want to put water in here, but I think this will work out for sure. And inside, there's not much, just a crafting table there and a chest there to hold flowers and all of the beeswax and stuff. And then the beehives will go right on here. And I have 30 more campfires, so I'm just going to expand this building down a ways so that I can fit all of the different campfires in here and eventually put beehives on top of them. The whole thing is finished, and now it's looking pretty nice from the inside. Just got a few flowers littered around for them to go and pollinate at. And it looks like I got some baby bees flying around, and they should be going home real soon. So it's working out and i already got three new beehives so now i just gotta populate this whole thing and get enough bees to start a farm somewhere else the bee multiplication has gone wonderfully and now i have 81 beehives all with bees inside of them ready for my honey farm so now i'm just gonna sleep really quick because this area is still very dangerous in those other three quadrants but now i have enough bees to make my farm with 10 different sections of bees which should be plenty way more than enough and now i just have to design the actual farm in minecraft bee farms aren't very difficult you just start off with azalea leaves and i'm going to be doing this in a section of eight just like i would do in my actual world and it looks like this bee wants to be my friend while i build this so we got the azalea leaves then behind the azalea leaves we want to put a row of hoppers all facing the same direction and that's for collecting all the honey that comes out of it then we put the beehives on top and these beehives actually have bees in them because I copied them with shift middle mouse click and that copies the NBT data. So all of the bees are already in this farm. This is how I'll be placing them in my actual world. So I just want to make it as close as possible. Then coming out of the beehives, we put a block behind them and behind that another row of blocks down here. And on top of those, we want to put comparators and these comparators are actually getting the output signal from these beehives through the block and that's important for distance of the redstone in the later parts of it and this is how we'll be powering the dispensers then from there we want to put one more row of blocks to put redstone on top of like that and now we start building up with half slabs half slabs are really nice for building up because redstone can go up on them but not down and so this way we get where we want it to be at the top into the dispensers without having it come back down and affect other circuits and in this case it wouldn't really break anything but in other cases it can be really helpful to have it not come back down then we put in these two rows of blocks up here like this and we put redstone on everything and this gives us a redstone distance of five so this will only activate when there's a level five honey inside of this bee nest 
And that's important because that's when the honey is actually full and that's when you can use the shears or the bottle on it to get the honey out of it. So obviously the next step then is to put in dispensers, which can be kind of difficult sometimes, but the easiest way I've found is just to put a block up there and then start building across looking almost straight up. Now there's only a couple steps left and the main one is to box this whole thing in with glass so that the bees cannot escape. This one's really important, otherwise they'll just fly off and get lost and may never come back to the hive. And one more really important step is to fill these with whatever you want to fill them with. In this case, I'm going to be using shears because I want to get honeycomb from them, not really honey by itself. I may switch that out later, but for now I'm just going to be using shears. Now that the time is set back to day, we can see that all of the bees come out. There are 28 bees in here, and they're all going to be pollinating using the azalea leaves. And that's a nice property of the azalea leaves is bees can still get pollination from them without having the flower in there, which can sometimes mess up pathfinding and things. But I think they've fixed most of those issues. So if you want to use regular flowers, you can. I just like the azalea leaves. And it looks like a few more just have to get some pollination and then they should all go back into their beehives. If you really want to make this farm efficient, you could actually increase the number of bees in there and then you'd have some with pollen on them ready to go back into the hives once the first ones come out. But that's a little bit harder to do since you can't exactly get them in nicely. You'd have to like do some really quick block replacements with bee nests on the sides. This simple build should work really nicely, but there is one thing that I'm not quite sure about, and that's how I'm going to be able to get all of the items out, because based on some simple calculations, I think that this should produce around like 48 honeycomb per Minecraft day, which isn't a crazy amount, but if I put 10 of these in a line, that increases to like 480, which could cause some hoppers to back up and things. I'm not 100% sure if that's quick enough. I doubt it is, so I might just line them up with hoppers, but I might also separate them into different dropper water streams and then do it that way. Just like that, all of them produced honeycomb, and it looks like I have a couple losses, which is not very cool. I don't know what that's about, but I got 18. There must be six in here because that leaves two bee nests that output. So, I don't know what that's about and I might have to find a workaround for that because I do not like losses in my system. I'm not sure how I could fix that. I've also decided that I'm just going to put all of these in a line, like 10 different segments, actually 5 different segments in 2 different lines next to each other and then they'll all output to a water stream at the end. So I'm not going to put in a whole bunch of item droppers in the water line, it'll just be this big thing in a line and then output at the end. After a little bit of thinking, I came up with this pretty good solution that uses mud blocks and flowers, which I didn't really want to use flowers before, but I think I'm going to have to to make it work properly so that I can collect all of the honeycomb or honey, whichever one I'm farming at the time. But this uses mud blocks because mud blocks actually are not a full block. You can sink into them a little bit, which allows blocks to get picked up by hoppers that are underneath the mud blocks. So I'll just make this system. 10 times and we'll call it good. Now it's time to go back to my survival world, get all the items I need and implement this into my industrial area. I think I now have everything I need. I have all my beehives here and all of this stuff plus the glass and slabs in here and I'm using cobblestone slabs because it's the block that I have a lot of and I got all the iron I have and redstone. So now I just got to get to building it and I'm just going to build it this way from here and then this will be the water stream that brings it over to the center path and I already showed you how to build it so I'm just going to build this really quick and get it done. Here it is, the bee farm. I finished all 10 modules and it fits perfectly in the middle here of the water streams coming from all of these farms and the water stream coming from my iron farm. And I think it really fills up this area nicely. It does leave this one gap back here, but I do have plans for that later. And it outputs plenty of honey. I've been AFKing it for around two hours now, which seems like quite a bit of time, but really it's not that much for AFKing. And it's output two shulker boxes, and this one is just about full, so almost three shulker boxes. Now that I have this bee farm done, I can start using the honeycomb for exactly what I want to use it for, which is the mega base. All of this blackstone here actually is going to have stripes of honeycomb going through it to look kind of gold-ish, and it'll give it a little bit more texture and detail. 
from this just matte black kind of build. And I'm actually going to do that next because I want to see how it looks before I finish all the other sides. And I got a whole bunch more blackstone to put in place and hopefully finish the bottom part of at least one of these two halves. I think I should be able to get maybe one of them done. I don't know how much blackstone I actually need to finish one, but I hope that I have enough. After working on this thing for a long time, you can see the honey from the back side here, and I also completed a lot of this side. But first, I want to show you the whole honey theme, and I think that this is how I'm going to keep it, at least for now. Once I figure out exactly what I'm going to do for that centerpiece, the outside parts might change a little bit just to complement that a little better. But right now, this is what I'm going with. I think it looks really nice and just adds a little bit more to these different side pieces, and I am going to leave the other sides the same. So like this one and the bottom half are all just blackstone and I'm going to leave them like that because I think that it just works better with only having the sides accented. So when I eventually do this side here, I'll also put the honey there, but I don't have enough blackstone for that side, but I do have a little bit of blackstone left. So I'm just going to fill in as much of this bottom part right here as I can just to get a little bit more progress done right now. So I don't have to do more later. That is all the blackstone I have and I didn't get me very far actually, but I mean, it's a little bit of progress, and that was somewhere along the lines of like 12 or 13 stacks of blocks. So, I mean, it definitely was a bit of <laughs> work, but nothing crazy. So now I just need a lot more blackstone to finish this up, but that was probably an hour's worth of mining blackstone. And I figured out that mining the blackstone is actually much quicker than trying to trade for it. It is a little bit more work because I can't just sit there the whole time, but it does get me a lot more. So if I want to finish this in a timely manner, I'm just going to have to mine all that blackstone or make a bigger gold farm. But I think either of those are going to take probably just about around the same amount of work. So I might just end up mining all of this blackstone. For now, though, I think this is a good amount of progress to stop on. So this is going to be where I'm ending the video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.